Yo guys, what's good? Ass here with another Exosphere's video. Piercing damage. How does it work and is it worth investing? Let's talk about it. As some of you might know, I test out a fair amount of champions in order to find out good rares or alternatives for other heroes. While doing that, I stumbled across piercing damage quite a lot. And then I wanted to look it up in the game, which you can do in the help section under battle guide, battle effect, and then down here at penetration. Deals damage that ignores target's defense by a certain value. Now, this is all good and fine, but how much is that value? Is it 5%, 10%, 50%? Who knows? So we want to figure that out. And just as a quick overview, let's go over damage in particular. So all damage is based on the attack stat of a hero. This one. It doesn't matter if they are physical chaos or magical attack. It doesn't matter. Even defense types or support types, they have the same rules. The next thing that matters is their multipliers. The little red number you can see here, 150%. So in general, the higher the better. Lastly, we have critical damage. It starts out at 150 and with all legendary gear, you can push this up to around 180%. So this is our baseline. All right, now that we have the basis, I wanted to look for champions that have very similar stats and also multipliers that are very high but still fairly close together. And naturally, I played around with Nirmish quite a lot. So Nirmish, as you might have noticed, he has a 700% damage multiplier. I made a video about him quite recently, so check that out if you want to know more about him in particular. Anyway, so another hero that I stumbled across is Derodan, and he has a 490% piercing damage multiplier. Insane! So naturally, I want to build them up, stats as close as possible, and if my assumptions are correct, then my estimation is that piercing damage penetrates around 25-30% to 30 of the enemy's defense. So the next thing we need to do is bring their stats as close together as we possibly can. So here I went with 4096 attack and 180.8 crit damage. On Nirmish we have 1514 attack and 177.1% crit damage. The higher attack value should offset the lower crit damage fairly evenly. Alright, so now that we have that all settled, we need to test them. So in order to do that, we simply go to one of the missions and I already picked one out that I think is pretty good. So this guy here has 10,000 HP and 1866 defense. This is fairly compatible with what you might see in PvP. Obviously lower HP numbers, but the defense is there. And maybe we find somebody closer? Not really. So we will focus on this guy. We don't want him to get any buffs or something. So we don't hit him at all. So nothing can happen with him. As a team, we just pick Garf and Burnovus in order to CC the enemies, Annie for the mana gain, and then Nirmesh. Let's go in. We also want to avoid any breaks of that sort, because that could offset the damage quite a bit, depending on what we broke. Let's skip that. And... Skip this. Okay, I already set this up to auto and one time speed because I want to see the damage numbers later in the um, in the editing software. 
but we can see these two, the North Northborn Elite Shieldmen, those are the ones we want to hit with our Nirmish later on. So we just focus on the right side and hit anything that we can. I will speed this up in post, so don't worry about it. We will do this five times, we will record the damage numbers, and once we're done, we will return with our uh, Derodon and do exactly the same thing. Obviously, we won't do the full fights. We will just go through and get Nirmish to his S2 uh, ability so he can attack them. And on. Okay, now we have that. We want to clear the screen of any effects as we can. And then hit this guy. And we record all these damage numbers. Now that the damage numbers are gone, we're just gonna hit retry and do this again and again and again. So I will see you after that. Oh, and in case you wonder why I didn't pick a lower stage where uh, this all goes quicker, I wanted to avoid a stage where we one-shot the enemy because this gives us a clearer picture even if we don't get all the numbers right for uh, the HP bar. So we can see exactly what's going on based on the HP bar, which is pretty nice. I only later realized that we could have set the animations to two times until it was Nirmish's turn to just speed this up. So, uh, yeah. So we want these runs to be all very consistent and one thing that I've noticed while like this is post me talking going through the numbers they are very consistent like frighteningly consistent and yeah because I also don't want to bore you to death I decided to lay over Nermer's numbers and then later on the uh, Derridan's numbers and yeah you can see already what's happening. It's pretty interesting. So I think that was five times and now we pick the same stage just with Derridan. And here we obviously want to follow the exact same procedure to not have any weird things happen. So yeah, that is important. So for this guy we actually don't need to lower the animation speed because he only hits twice so there's only two damage numbers on the field. We can continue with 2x speed, it will be fine. We got into a little taunt scenario, which doesn't matter because both of the front guys have the same values. It doesn't matter if we hit the left or the right guy.
I actually had to cut in a 6 run for Derridan because that guy didn't want to crit and I needed a block, a regular hit and a crit. So that's the last run that you see here and yeah once that's over we go over everything together. Yo, so now all the testing is done and you guys have already seen the numbers. I for one, I'm fairly surprised how really consistent the game is. Like everything is down to the number. I had to go through it three, four times just to make sure that I didn't skip a run or that I'm not just crazy. So yeah, but these are the numbers and what do you think? So let's go over Nirmish. He has the higher multiplier obviously and a little bit higher attack value. I don't know how much that factors in given the numbers are really really close. Um, now you can also see that I put a percentile uh, of damage so Nermish damage is 104% higher than uh, than Derudon's and in, re uh, in respective Derudon's damage is 96% of uh, Nermish damage for the first run, right? And run 1 and for Derudon run 5 uh, are the crit ones, then run 2 and for Derudon run 3 are the block runs and the other 3 are the runs that just are regular damage. So yeah, both of them have the potential when they crit to just nuke those targets away and given the defense that these units have you can extrapolate that they will do exactly the same in pvp nothing can stand against them even if they don't crit if there's a target with 1800 defense that's dead because there's rarely any units that have 7000 hp so this is really cool another really cool thing to see is how much damage block actually mitigates so block mitigates from regular damage not the crit damage so the number that you see down there the 36.59 and the 35.99 percent are from the regular hits that are taken pretty good so um i don't know how much block the guys had but i think kashino did a video about block recently and it was pretty good so uh, check that out they go into more detail about that but here you can see a number and somebody who is smarter than me can figure out the exact multipliers and uh, do the math here but yeah uh, I'm surprised so a 700% multiplier is comparable a 490 let, let's round it up to 500% multiplier for penetration damage which gives us the roughly 25% that I mentioned earlier. So my assumption was really correct or really close to what it is. This is a really good note because that means if you have the choice, let's say you want to build a unit that has penetration damage, you can now kind of easily calculate and assume, oh, these are my damage numbers. So if I pick a unit that has similar values, I will penetrate a similarly defensive target with a lower multiplier. It's pretty good and some of you might have units that they use that have a lower or medium multiplier and that could be replaced with a, um, with a piercing damage uh, multiplier that might be around the same number. I think the game is very balanced in terms of how they did the numbers so you won't necessarily find somebody with around the same stats uh, with a very high multiplier in terms of piercing damage. And now the question remains is piercing damage worth it or should you just go for a higher multiplier? Um, in my opinion, 
it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Here, so if I would compare Nurmesh with Derridan, who do I see has more value for me? It really depends on the situation. Nurmesh is a dark type, notoriously bad with mana gain, so it's hard to get him going. But his S2 is another damage type ability that has a reset built in. Derudan on the other side, he just doesn't care. He has piercing damage and he will deal a good amount of damage there. And the higher the target's defense is, because I think it's percentage based, the more value you would get out of Derudan. But uh, it has to be like higher values, right? Like 2500. And unfortunately, barriers for the dragon emperors they are not just defense right they are another layer of hp you basically have to burn through let's say the 14000 barrier which is just hp and it's just based off their defense how high that point value is penetration damage will not deal more damage to that shield so i'm pretty certain it will deal around the same damage However, in terms of value, Derudan has an S2 which increases hit and all that stuff. So this is pretty good against dodge type of abilities and awesome for, in general, like skipping a turn. If I would compare these two champions one to one, Derudan for PvP, Nurmish for PvE. Probably in 9 out of 10 cases, this would be my choice. I really hope this video helped you guys and yeah, you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun for me to make and dive deeper into the numbers. So yeah, that's already it. If you like these kind of videos, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss anything. I want to make more videos like this. If you enjoy it, leave a comment, leave a like. It helps me out so much. Small hint, Derudan is actually my upcoming quick cuts, so be excited for that. I go a little bit more into detail about him, and you know my quick cuts, it's not really long, so it's pretty easy to digest. With all that said, it was a pleasure to have you here. I will see you in the next one, and until then, enjoy the grind.